Hi screen printers, this is Colin with Ryanet. Today we're going to talk about eco frames uh, and installing eco panels. So first I want to show you what a frame is going to look like when you get it and then what we do, then we'll grab a panel and we'll, and we'll install it. So this is what it looks like coming in. Everything is here and attached. We have these little stickers on here. You just peel the stickers off and we move on to our next step. So here I have the stickers taken off. I have the locking strips up on the sides. It was right here like that. I have taken it off and just pushed it here on the top tier of that. This is my stretching bar, my stretching tool. This is going to be used to put everything in place. So this is the box that your 20 by 24 eco panels will come in. They come in six to a box. Pull them out. They're collapsed inside. The fold is not going to hurt your mesh at all. So I'm going to pull one of these out, fold that back up, put that right back in the box for easy storage. So next I want to show you that all the mesh panels are clearly labeled with a fabric label and it says on here exactly what the mesh count is and the thread diameter. In this case, it's either going to be Saudi High Tex or it's going to be Saudi Hydro. Hydro is the thin thread fabric that you're hearing a lot about. High Tex is the standard uh, thread diameter fabric that's been around for many, many years. So I'm choosing to use a 110 Hydro. Uh, I'm going to be making some screens for classes we're coming up. And so I want to show off thin thread specifically for some special effects. So I figured I'd put one of these together here for our, for our training purposes. So one of the primary things that's going to be different from other uh, snap and lock type of uh, screens out there is that these are all woven. There's no glue for adhesion here. These are literally stitched into this plastic strip. There's, so there's no chance of them coming undone through either screen reclaim chemistry or cleaning chemistry. These will always be here. So what we want to do for our first step is we actually want to roll this over halfway. So instead of being straight up, we take it and we flip it once. And then when we slide it into the channel, give it a little push. And then we want to center. Then we're going to take the opposite side and do the exact same thing. One thing to note, So one thing to note is that as you get into higher mesh counts, this label can make it a little tough to lock this in right here. Just grab a, a soft piece of rubber, squeegee material or something to use to help depress that area right there and it'll snap right in. Now I'll continue to the end pieces doing the same thing giving a flip over once, slide that right in, center that, take the other one, the other locking strip that happened to pop out, put it right back, fold this over once, drop that right in. I'm going to make sure that that's centered. There we go. Now my next step is I'm actually going to take this tool and I'm going to stretch the long sides first. So we don't want to just pull real hard, real fast. The idea is you want to do this slow and controlled. So all these delicately over interwoven pieces of mesh where the knuckles of this mesh is, where those pieces overlap each other, they have time to slowly relax. We don't want to hit a, a breaking point on the mesh by pulling on it too fast. So now I'm going to flip this around to the other side. Pulling slow. That snappy here is it locking into place. Now 
Now out of all of these, doing these long sides first is going, you're gonna feel the most tension because you're traveling the shortest distance or it has the most tension initially, where pulling this way is going to feel a lot, a lot easier. You're gonna experience less resistance uh, because it has greater elongation. The mesh has greater elongation, uh, so it's not gonna be as tight the first time. And the screen is done. Let's check tension. So that came in at just under 32. And 30. So one of the things you'll notice when you first stretch up one of these panels, regardless of what mesh it is, low mesh count, high mesh count, high tex or high dro, you're gonna get your initial tension that will be very high, and then everything is going to relax. You're gonna see really fast drop in the first couple of hours, but after about 12 hours, everything's going to even out, and you're gonna see a five to six Newton drop over time. So this 30, 32 Newtons that we have here will drop down to 25-ish by the time we're ready to put it into production. And this is a 110 hydro mesh. So while your screen is now done and we're just waiting on tensions to relax, there's a couple things you can do before you're ready to put emulsion on it and then get it into production. We actually want to take some tape and we want to place it on these sides as a protective barrier against any impact uh, from other screens, from bumping it against corners of anything as we put it into the press and we uh, apply pressure from clamping systems. All of these can be pinch points, and since this mesh is directly exposed, we want to protect it. On an aluminum static frame, you actually have glue on all these sides that is protecting the mesh, and it allows us to have habits that are not ideal um, for handling all frames, but it certainly works because that mesh is protected. Uh, there's a lot of different glues, or sorry, there's a lot of different tapes you can use. Uh, you can use Polycan, you can use Newman uh, tape, you can use duct tape. Uh, I tend to prefer to use Gorilla tape. It was easy and available for me, and I know a lot of other screen printers use it. If you have any specific questions about eco frames or mesh, specifically the Saudi high techs versus Hydro, what they're good for, please leave a comment below. We would love to hear what your questions are. We will use those for our videos coming up in the future. Thanks again. Check us out on screenprinting.com. Have a great day.